I missed you so I'm letting go of everything but you These are the good times with you Baby, this year is just gonna be you and me Hang by the fire and chill Isn't this how it's supposed to be? Making our Christmas memories, oh And I've been longing to hold you close Forget about Christmas memory. Hey fam, welcome back to our post Christmas shenanigans. And I have Davia with me. If you saw the baby reveal video, then you would have seen Davia from her reaction with all the food in her mouth. Chicken nuggets, chick fil Yeah, so, it's good. So, or I think, Very good. I think I did a video like a few months ago when you were on the phone. Oh, so Lord of yeah. mercy, yes. She was just as loud as she would be if she was in person, so it didn't make a difference. This is Dave, yeah, for those of you that don't know. She's my very first childhood friend from kindergarten one. Oh, we're chatting from far. Now ah. we're oh, far for go. From Timbuktu! Dave came to visit for Christmas, which I'm so happy about because it's been like maybe two, three years since two I last years. saw her. Oh, you guys also saw a vlog with her when I was in Atlanta. She lives in Atlanta. So uh, I'm a nomad right now. <laughs> she's a nomad. Yeah, I'm but a nomad. <laughs> I was in Atlanta when she was based in Atlanta. So yeah. yeah. Yeah, you've been on the channel. I forgot about that. Yes. Oh, you're not you're not so much a stranger. Y'all right. miss me. Alright, cool. <laughs> right, cool. So she came to visit for Christmas and I'm so happy about that. She's leaving me soon, which is so sad. But I take what I can get. So go when you're busy. Oh, no. You barely have time. A girl's got to work. Oh, my Wait, how did you feel when you found out I was having a baby? Girl, I was so damn happy. <laughs> I was like, ah! We saw the food in your mouth. <laughs> guys, guys, you have no idea. It wasn't one emotion. It was... I was happy for you. I was surprised, but I was also like, it's about time. You know what I'm saying? Thank you. May I try to get advice from the middle people? To live my life, you know? <laughs> Watch your man. Anyways, it's breakfast time now, so I'm gonna eat and then come back. <laughs> prepared by Chef Dunks, who is still preparing his own omelet. Then mm -hmm. I eat our boiled eggs without adding salt or black. Well, it has to, there's a requirement. Who does okay. that? It has to be a particular egg from a particular brand. Because that's the best tasting egg. So the me. egg comes salted? No, it just, <laughs> it just tastes, you can tell it tastes authentic. But it and it just, no, but the the taste is good. I don't want to put salt or pepper. Mm, so it's not, it taste. changes. Yeah, it don't have the eggy taste like when you go buy like the cheap $2 egg. You get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Where it tastes like, ugh. Does actually taste good. How much an egg they cost? Depends on where you buy it. What's the price range for the egg? A dozen mm. of eggs. A tray of eggs. You got <laughs> like $10 for it. $10. Thank you. Vital Farm eggs. Go look it up. Pasteurized. Sean's breakfast. Cheese omelet with jam and bread and bacon and plantain. This is brunch. <laughs> ah, see my <man> here? <laughs> 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 
boil egg with bacon and plantain and then she had the fried dumplings because she couldn't wait. Hungry help me. Yeah, but that's a traveling to do. Yes, sir. <coughs> Where you, how far are you going from here? Four hour drive. It's raining. And then what? What do you mean? You driving tomorrow, sir? No, I'm gonna go home. I'm driving home. Gotta get ready for work. I'm working in North Carolina now, doing flight instructing, teaching people for fly plane. You pull up, you see more blue. You press down, you see more green. Wait, you what? see more sky, you see more ground. Okay. <laughs> In case you don't understand what she's saying, she's a pilot. She's a Jamaican female pilot based in the United States and flying all over the place. She's Georgia, a Georgia at what? 1416 Waterford Road, apartment 2A. You can find her there if you need to. <laughs> <laughs> On the market. <laughs> <laughs> so this is the reason why she's nomadic. She's yes, not I'm a nomad. <laughs> and this is the reason I cannot get a hold of her because she is always in the sky. Now that she's grounded. <laughs> <laughs> gotcha. You know she's grounded. She's now in North Carolina. She had to come by. Right? But mm -hmm. you'll see her in an airport near you at some point. Where I know she's in North Carolina, she's also teaching people how to fly. So, that's where we are. <laughs> so, pull up, you see sky, pull down. What are you pulling? To climb. You pull, pull the back? Mm. Pull the yoke or the steering stick. Wheel. There you go, pull the steering wheel. The yoke is like the steering wheel, right? Well, not really, but because it don't really steer, but anyway, technical it is. Yeah. So, <laughs> so the intention is that... Can you tell I'm an A student? Right. Yes. The intention is that one of these days she's going to take me in the plane and we're going to fly. We just haven't done it yet. We're going to fly and we're going to record the whole thing and it should be fun. But until then, we'll just talk about the flight. Yes. Ta tell us a little bit about your flight journey from Jamaica. Because it's all started in Jamaica. Yeah, I went on Caribbean Airlines. Mm -hmm. oh, no, 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 before you, there, before you go there, before you go there, before you go there. Sit down, go class. Oh, <laughs> yeah. I will start from even before that. Let me get a little bit of backstory before you answer that. From when prep school, from day one, she knew that she wanted to be in the sky. At first, it was flight attendant. She used to say, when I grow up, I want to be a flight attendant. And I was so happy for her. But at the same time, I'm like, me want to know what me want to be too, but me never know what me want to be. Well, the difference is, mm -hmm. Russia never know. But as any kid, mm -hmm. like I would change. Like this week, I want to be a flight attendant. Because you know, every time you go overseas, <clears throat> I was like, oh, I want to be a flight attendant. Right? But then, you know. You know, they're overseas no more. I forget about being flight attendants. So I'm like, oh, I want to be a lawyer. Oh, I want to be a pastor. Oh, I want to be a teacher. And it was just an ever-revolving door. Teacher, pastor, lawyer. Finally, the only one with it stick was law. And that stick all the way through high school. Mm -hmm. Until, mm, oh, what grade was I in? I forgot what grade I was in. I think it was probably fifth form. I did join the aviation club. No, it was... Uh, I think it was sixth form. I, I don't remember. remember. Meadowbrook. You <laughs> say I never have Meadowbrook. <laughs> Meadowbrook. <laughs> I didn't have aviation club where I, I went. I went to Wilmers. We, we went didn't. To we didn't have aviation club. Wilmers. He went Meadowbrook. to Georges. Georges. They didn't have aviation club, so that's probably why we're not pilots. Right? Well, you know, Meadowbrook so was I the blame, first. I blame them. No, Meadowbrook was the first <laughs> one, okay. man. But I was the first school that had the aviation club. My classmates at the time started the club, right? Mm -hmm. So it started at Meadowbrook, and then he has since then grown to other schools. Oh, what a nice <coughs> classmate. So, but when I go in there, I was like, what is, what is this? What am I, the top ball robot, top ball machine? You know, I was just like, okay. Because I never really understand the whole piloting thing. There's never a desire to be a pilot at all. I just like the flight attendant. Them look nice. They will serve you. You know, you look a color when I you know, used to travel from Air Jamaica. Right. So I never really think about pilots. Honestly, I never know pilots exist them time there, to be honest. Mm -hmm. I never think about cockpit. I just know the flight experience from a passenger point of view. And that's all my thought went to. I was a little girl, I don't really know much. Now when I joined the aviation club and we did a discovery flight, which is like a introductory flight, right? Discovery, introductory. And then that's when I was like, 
Damn. This feel good. Screw being a lawyer or a flight attendant. I'm going to just fly the plane. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm up here flying, thinking I was flying the plane, right? Hey, really, you're not really, you don't know what you're doing on <laughs> a discovery flight. But it was just exhilarating, you know what I'm saying? And it just felt, I don't know, powerful in a way to know, say, little old me behind, you know, a little old plane. A big old plane. It was a little plane. It's a little plane. It don't matter. But in a little. In a little. It is small. Not you can literally like push the idea. plane. Yeah, you can push it, but it, it, you can sit Your on it. Your car probably weighs more than the plane. It don't matter. I'm going to carry it too. <laughs> it's a yeah. little plane. So but now, you went on the a the discovery time. flight, and you enjoyed the flight, and be like, all right, I want to be a pilot. Then what was the next step? Because I know I have a lot of Jamaicans watching that are in Jamaica that would love to be pilot and don't know the first step or what they can do. So it would be good that they can probably hear about your journey and then go and do some research. Yeah, you need to do research. It, you know, and, and then take it from there. Don't follow every single thing because everybody's journey is going to be different. But do some research, but at least you get some kind of insight. So what happened after you did the yeah. discovery flight? How did you get into... Yeah, like Canada? you said, do do your research. Because like when I did it, when I started, it was quite a while ago. And things have, have changed since then. Yeah. But after that, a flight school came to Jamaica. And they were doing like, um, I don't know what you call it, like a conference. They did like a conference. And, you know, they tell you, oh, there's pilot shortage. And... There is a huge demand for pilots and we can't get enough pilots, so you should be a pilot. <clears throat> and so I went to the conference and then at the conference, if you did want to enroll into the school, they have you do a test. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it was like an aptitude test, a math test, English test. I forgot what it was. It was, it was a while ago, but you, I did a couple tests and then after the test it's 12 p.m time for lunch remember to wash your hands thank you thank you <laughs> after you know after you do the test and they grade you you know if you're successful then you'll you'll do you'll be able to go on to the school so that's how i got in not every flight school is like that every flight school is different at it probably was just a selling point for them. I don't know. You so know. you got into the school from Jamaica. Mm -hmm. Where's the school based? Well, the school not exist where, anymore. Or where was it based at the time? It was in Florida. So they had multiple locations. So then you applied for student visa and just went to Florida. You didn't yeah, do any so schooling in Jamaica for piloting. No. no. Oh. Mm -mm. So I couldn't. If you're trying to do flight training in Jamaica. I have no advice. I've never done it, so I can't really tell you on that side. Mm -hmm. But all I can tell in in general, overall, get mentorship. Like find somebody, find people, not one person. Find people mm -hmm. to help mentor you through it because it's not it's not easy, you know. So you're gonna have a lot of a lot of roadblocks, a lot of challenges, like with anything, you know. Yeah. So on a scale of 1 to 10, how much do you love flying? Negative 10. Negative? I'm just joking. <laughs> Negative. I'm just joking. No, mom, I love it, man. Like, I, like, sometimes I'm up there flying, and you just look down on, you know, I mean, I'm not looking down. I'm not, like, looking down on people. But I'm looking down at, you know, everybody, the, you know, traffic, I'm just seeing everybody going about them life and I'm just like, man, I'm so lucky. I'm so blessed to just be up here doing this. Like it's to me it's it's also it's also therapeutic. You know, you kinda get away from everything. I know a lot of people are scared of it, but it's like the ocean, right? We don't really know much about the ocean, so you're scared of the ocean. Once you become more knowledgeable about flying and stuff, you're not as scared. It's it's much safer to fly. Than it is to drive. I mean, no, say you get an AK every single day and drive going. You know, there's nothing that so. make me believe that part there at all, darling. Right? <laughs> well, not <laughs> emphasize so much on the negative, man. No, I mean, I mean, I'm so happy that it's so safe to the point that you can say that, but. It's the safest mode of transportation. I see, you're there. But it is because I have no experience. I'm speaking from a, 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 a position of ignorance, obviously, because I've never flown. But, but just flying in a plane. No, before. but I mean, I've never 
flown the plane, but I've been a passenger and that's scary. <laughs> Why? I don't like flying. I don't like being in the plane. One. I just want to arrive. My car can fall out of the ground. But the plane can fall out of the sky. No, where do people get this from? So the plane well, planes don't, don't just fall out of the sky. So I'm going to say plane crash. Missing bird fall out of the sky. Why the plane can't do it? But Missy plane come down and them can't find the plane. No, drop it, drop out. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> yeah. we're, we're, not, we're not going to get into all of that. Hey, There's too many let technicalities. Let me know the if you and... agree that the plane can fall out of the sky. Doesn't it fall? Oh. It does not fall out. So what happens so when... So gravity really work? Hmm? So well, that's a whole conversation. That's a whole different conversation for like physics. So it's it's a lot. So it's not one of them questions where it's like, oh, it's this. Yeah. Right. A lot of and it really depending on case by case, scenario by yeah, scenario. Everything is different. Different so. variables that cause things to happen. I get that. But whether I want bird go in the engine. Uh, yeah, but you don't uh, fall out the sky. Or the engine stop, or the propeller stop, or whatever. You are in the sky, and then you're not. Oh, you're reaching ground, not jump, and jump. You don't fall once there is. Once you have wings, so you glide over it the can sky. still fly. Yes, once you have the wings and so your you your plane is in it. That's why I said this is going to go into way too much. Once you have wings on and your plane is in a attitude, right? where it can sustain flight, it will glide. But it's not going to be like, oh, I'm flying here. Boop. You get no, what I'm saying? No, but maybe but, it don't fly. Will it, it not does, dip? It don't will it not dip? Yeah, yeah you're going to, you're going to, but it's a controlled descent. You can control the descent. So unless it's what something you where. you control the time and drop it or drop? Think both. Oh, maybe the way when I say it different. Because when you tell me something drop, it just mean it first can. you had some form of control and then you have nothing and then it's like, no, so it don't work like that. I'm thinking there's that sometimes, but then some of it is. No, you have to control. Yeah, just like if you fall from a building, you can control whether you drop on your foot, you drop on your head top, you drop on your hand. You, you have the control, but it's I think still we should change drop. this topic. <laughs> you still drop. We're Can, hard I on. It, it, suppose the, the plane, you say gradually have control and gradually go down. What if by the time it reached down, a water or some bush or something like that because think about it just like a car can broke down and just shut down by you you don't want it up in the middle of the highway Me don't want to play dropping in the bush but tell me speaking of car just <laughs> engine shut down the plane engine can just shut down in the sky midway yeah but you said just the glide in there yeah you can have engine failure and then what happened then you go you through glide. your checklist and you glide to a landing spot but what if a landing spot is like Three hours away. You can go there's for no, three hours. There's no way there's landing spot here. If I lose what my engine. What if you're engine, going cross, cross, country, there's cross always, Atlantic. Then you land in the sea. You ditch it. It's called ditching. You land in the sea. Remember Captain Sully? Landed yeah. in. You don't know about Captain Sully? This yeah. must be a story in pilot school. Tell me about Everybody Captain knows Sully. about Captain Sully yeah. that landed in the Hudson River. In a pilot school. What? Everybody that sounds like a pilot school. No, you don't have a pilot, pilot school story. I didn't even know it from pilot school. Me, me, from flight school. Do you know about Captain Do Sully? You know about know Everybody Captain know about Captain Sully that landed in the Hudson River. This is crazy. That you guys don't know? They even made a movie about it, like, a couple years ago. Wow. What, five years ago or so? So, so you're telling me, so like an airline plane with... 200 passengers, he can land that in the sea? Yes, that's what Captain Sully did. He landed it in the river. And they survived? Every person survived. Well, Everybody survived. Go and go Google it right now. Google it right soon, now. Soon. We'll Google it together, guys. See? Them that know about that. But them know about the one where everybody did. <laughs> yeah, because bad news spread faster than good ones. <laughs> you know how the world works. Okay, so what about in the sky? Are there like roads, lanes, alleys, avenues, drives? Yeah. How, does airspace. It how does it work? Do you like, do you see? I mean, you, you have airspace, just like how here you have like Highway 65 or, you know, a certain road. Mm -hmm. We also have airspace. So everything up there is pretty much regulated. Right, so you have different restrictions for flying into different zones. Then let's call it that way. Right, mm -hmm. you zone out the sky, and you have different operating requirements 
that you have to abide by when you're doing it. So it's, there's a lot to it. So there's no one answer for that because there's different sectors, right? Gotcha. And each sector requires different type of, what is equipment, qualifications, and just like, you know, how, to fa how fast you can fly. So there's um, speed limit? Mm -hmm. like a I, wish by, I wish by a seat in the sky. You don't see it, you know it. It's the regulation. So you have to know the speed limit? Mm. Then suppose you don't know it. Yeah, yeah if, if you don't know it, you're not, you're not supposed to be a pilot. <laughs> so so uh, is the speed yeah. limit based on the different heights? Yeah, the speed limit is going to change based off of which airspace you're in. Right? So... Um, I don't really know too much about a lot of them because I'm not flying planes that's... I know the surface level, right? But it's, it's going to depend based off of what regulation you're flying under, what airspace you're in, what equipment you're in. And sometimes, like, ATC will tell you, traffic con air traffic controls will tell you, like, hey, keep your speed below 200. Like, I know the... So you have the, them in the air as while they're flying and they're constantly, like, monitoring the flight? Sometimes. Not all the time. So you have air police? That's how the air traffic controllers. You know, they're in a tower. They're not in the sky flying like a police car. You know, like the police, they might hide off and try to catch your speed. They're not there to catch you to speed. Oh. They're there to help you. So they're there in the sky flying like a police plane? No, they're they're on the ground oh. in a building, yeah, just looking at the screen. Yeah. I don't know, this one is going there. Oh, fly this head in to avoid that traffic. So when you speed, when I get a ticket and anything? Uh, I don't know what happens to... I mean, I guess it would be a violation, so they might give you a phone number to call. What happens after the phone number? I don't know. I never get a phone number before. So, you ever, you have you ever been flying and then out of nowhere you see a plane that you didn't expect? Like, oh my God, he's coming in my direction. Mm -hmm. What do you do? It's your job to see and avoid traffic. So, I mean, obviously you're going to be in areas where you may not have air traffic controllers there. And you have somebody that have a radio failure or they just don't want to talk on the radio. Mm -hmm. And they're out there doing cowboy flying. And you know, I've had a couple of times, where, or you have student pilots that don't know what the hell they're doing. Right? They're not scanning like they're supposed to be scanning. And I've had, what, uh, probably three near mid-air collision. Because just, you know, people just don't pay attention. So, so then they're coming in like, zhoom. The layman stuff. Not really yeah. So you can't communicate before. Like, you I communicate. Go like, you so you... Right? So, so you pick up the same way the frequency. So, so that's also a regulation, right? Mm -hmm. If you're on a collision path with an airplane in a certain way, depending on where you are in relation to that plane, we have legal requirements in who has the right of way and how, what you do to avoid that, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So it's regulatory. Obviously, if you're up there, right, and, in, the and you do and the regulation, if, if you're doing it the way the regulation said puts you in danger, don't do it, obviously, right? Common sense. Mm -hmm. Just do what you can to avoid the traffic and not be a statistic. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So you just have to have, you have to have attentiveness. You have to have situational awareness um, and just think fast, you know? Mm -hmm. You don't really have time to be like, oh, Indecisive. I? I always tell people, like, if up there, if you make a decision, stick with it. Like if you're on, like, you know, we have things that we go through, right? Like you have emergency procedures that we practice, right? And then like students, obviously if it's your first time, you don't really know. You, your judgment isn't going to be as good, you know, as somebody where is more experienced, more seasoned. And, you know, students will be like, oh, I'm going to choose here as my landing spot. And they'll see my reaction. I'm like... Oh, I'm going to choose here, I'm like, Oh, I'm going to choose here. I'm like, stop. Just choose one, right? And just go to it. Because they need to see why that would not have been a good spot, right? But if you're up there and you're descending because you don't have an engine, or maybe you do have an engine, but you have an engine fire, you don't have time to be, oh, let me pick. No, you got to go through your checklist, do what you have to do. Pick that spot and land. Do the best you can with what you can. And then the more you practice it, the better your decision-making skills are, the better you're able to evaluate the entire situation, right? And choose the best option. Mm -hmm. But you're not gonna get it 
right the first time. Like the first time I did my emergency, you know, spot. I was not gonna make it. It was a horrible spot, right? But that's why I would do it so that I can be like, okay, I know how this plane flies. I know how much distance I need to stop it. You, you factor in the environment around it, right? Is there a whole bunch of houses there? Uh, a busy road? Is there a highway? So it really just depends. Is it an alligator pond? All right, next question. Are you ever scared when you're flying? Barely. I'll have one and two occasions where I'm like, oh, but like something has to happen. You get what I'm saying? Like I have to have like a malfunction or... Tell me about a time, one of those, one or two times when it was scary. I mean, I was flying a plane one time and the engine just start cut out. And then what? Not today, Satan! <laughs> but you know, the engine started cutting out. And then, you know, I had like my oh shit moment for like, you know, five seconds. And I'm like, all right, girl, get it together. I just run through the checklist. I was high enough. So I wasn't, you know, I wasn't worried. I was 6,000 feet. So I could glide a good way if I did lose my engine. There's an airport there. Um, so at that point, you know, you're factoring, okay, for how high I'm at and how far I'm at, can I glide to that airport, right? If not... Okay, what's my next option? You know, you we have checklist items that we go through. So I just went through the checklist items and, you know, just start. Honestly, sometimes I just suffer just trouble things. Sometimes maybe a checklist not going to help you. And I just, you know, did one thing and the engine came back. So it was running a bit more smoothly. And then I just went to the airplane and then on short final, it did the same thing. And at that point, I was like, I don't care. I'm going to make it either way. So, so during that five second oh shit moment, you didn't ever say, Bomba, I ate this now, you know? No, I wasn't gonna, I wasn't gonna die. Like, it's, it was in Kansas, so it was, <laughs> <laughs> like, no, it's, no. Like, I wasn't, I wasn't scared, like, it wasn't a fear of, like, oh my gosh, I'm gonna die, you know? Or I didn't tell my mommy all over. It was more of a, oh man, oh man, I gotta explain this to the boss. Like, I put the plane down and I feel. That's like more of where it came from, but it wasn't like a... Shit. <laughs> it wasn't like a, it wasn't like a, oh my gosh, I'm going to lose my life. Because it's like, it's like nothing but farmlands there. You get what I'm saying? So it's like, yeah, I'm probably just land on a grass or, you know, land on a somebody. Land yeah, land on somebody plantation. You know what I'm saying? And it's all trimmed. So, you know, maybe the grass look high, but, you know, I wasn't... There, I was not fearful for my life that I'm gonna die. No, it was more of, oh, I don't really want to have to explain this to the boss and to, you know, the big boys, the regulation, like, is this gonna work against me when I go for a job? It probably won't, because there's nothing, that, that was my fault, obviously. But it's just, you know, that added thing that you have to explain when you do go to an interview. Um, for somebody, but wow. I think the only time that I've really, that I can say like I was scared, like holy moly, was probably one of the mid-air collision, but I saw it, but to me, it was more of a, oh shit, can I get away from this in time, you know? And you did a bit. Yeah, I did. Of course, you're here. Yeah. <laughs> that part. Probably would not survive that one, you know? By the time you see it, it's like, it too late, so. But that was probably, that was probably the well, only you know, time. I'm happy I've had, you survived. I live to see another day. So. so what are some of the challenges that you faced or one can expect to, to face um, when going in aviation? So some of the challenges that I face, I mean, I think financial is a big one, right? You're gonna get financially, you're gonna find financial challenges because it's a lot of money you're spending upfront in a short period of time. Um, How long is flight training? It's dependent on that person. So people always ask me that and I always tell them it's gonna be dependent on you. How fast do you learn? How often are you doing your flight lessons? Um, how, much how, much, how much money you have, that's a big factor. I always tell people, like, if you're not dedicated and you're not serious, like, you, you're wasting your time and money and other people's time. So it really just depends. Everybody does it different. Some people can get from private, you know, from zero hours to your commercial license 
in the shortest I've seen it was six months and I've seen people taking years. So it's going to depend on mm -hmm. availability of the plane, how much money you have, um, how much time are you dedicating to it? What's the weather like? Mm -hmm. You know, how, how easily are you grasping it? Mm -hmm. um, so there's a lot of factors. It's, not, it's, you know, college, you can do a four year and it finish in four years. Because when you go to college, it's really up to you studying, right? Mm -hmm. But with flying, it's up to plane availability, money, you know, it's a, a lot about your health. Mm -hmm. It's a big one a lot of people don't think about. Like I've seen, you know, you may study a lot, you may have the money, but, you know, something as simple as your medical, you know, as a, every pilot has to have a medical. So something as simple as that can throw you off for a long time. So it's, 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 it's very much an individual basis. Um, you touch upon finance and that being are playing a big part in you going from zero to commercial. Commercial. Right? So I'm a Jamaican. I'm very interested, dedicated, have the time. And it's about, all right, finding the funds now. Generally, or just a ballpark, about what am I looking at to go from zero to commercial? Oh. What's that, what's that figure like around what? I don't know. <laughs> I don't That'd know be because, in Jamaica. yeah, I don't know what the price is in no, Jamaica. No, I mean like, say, say I'm a Jamaican here and that's what I want to do. Oh, um, it's gonna depend on the flight school. So every flight school charge different price and it depends on the type of plane that you're flying. Um, it's relatively easy to find though. Like if you Google flight schools in North Carolina, mm. right? And then you see the flight school come up, click on it, and they will literally give you the price outline for how much the course is. So everywhere is gonna be different. But I will say when it comes to the pricing, if the school tell you, hey, you know, from zero to commercial, or maybe they add, you know, your flight instructor certificates on there. Just give you a, a, a ballpark. I'm not sure if this is accurate. It's probably not accurate. But like, say it's $80,000, right? If they tell you $80,000, you're probably going to spend more than $80,000. I think that's the biggest takeaway when it comes to the pricing. So not necessarily how much it costs because it's going to be expensive. I'm just telling you right now. It's going to be. But more so, if, if you have to take out a loan and it says 90,000, take out 100,000. Just to, because the way they quote you for your lessons, they quote you at the bare minimum regulatory required hours, right? So I'll give you an example. If you're going for your private pilot license, you need a minimum of 40 hours. That's just minimum. Chances are you're probably not gonna get your license in 40 hours. Say you get it in 50 hours. So that's already increased. You've gone 10 hours over, right? So if the instructor on the plane, let's just give you a rough estimate, is $250 an hour. 250 times 10, all right? You already exceed it, right? So factor that part in there. Um, if you fail a test, that's more money, right? You can put that in there, especially if you're paying for housing. You fail a test, you're going to take longer, right? Housing is another thing. If they quote you, oh, you can get it done in 10 months. You might. You might get it done in 10 months. But if the weather is bad for one month, guess what? You're there for 11 months now. You have to factor back in that. So I would say it's not to scare them. No, no, it's not to scare them. That's good. that's good information. Yeah, because I didn't know that. You know, when I started, and that's why I said, you know, find mentors, get plugged in, get connected with people because they've already been there so they can help you with things that they've experienced. Um, and I wish I knew that because, like, we went you know, took out exactly how much I said. And we went, what, 15, 15 or 20,000 over? Yeah. Aww. So like, do you have a mentor or did you have mentors? Um... In flight school, I did not have any mentor. Mm, if you no. could go back, no. What would be uh, one of the ways or some of the ways that you would seek and find a mentor? 
I think it's easier now. It wasn't as easy when I did it. Now it's easier because you're seeing more pilots on social media. Like you have a much easier reach to to get connected with people. So I never have that, you know, what all we had was Facebook at the time. So I never really had that when I was doing it. But like now Instagram, you know, you just search for a hashtag and you see the person, you mm -hmm. know, tag their picture in that hashtag. You click on it, you send them a message, hey, love to see what you're doing. You know, I've always had an interest in it. You have any pointers? Easy. For me, how I had to do it, I went on the flight school page, Facebook page, and you know, they always post pictures of your solo or, you know, you've gotten a, a license. I went on the page, saw they posted a Jamaican guy, and then I was like, you know, they posted his name. So now I'm like searching through their, Insta their, their Instagram, like their Facebook followers and like the likes and the comments to say, did this guy like or comment one of the pictures so I can reach out to him? Because I didn't know anybody to talk to. So that's how mm -hmm. I talked to somebody. But now it's it's a lot more easier. You know, it's, it's more... Accessible. It, yeah, it's more accessible. Before it wasn't so much, you know, because you, you don't really, you don't just walk around and say, oh, yeah, she's a pilot. Oh, yeah, he's a pilot. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's not as easy unless you're going to, but that's another thing they could do, go to airports, right? Not necessarily the big international airports, because the chances of you, you know, a pilot going to stop and talk to you is really slim. He's either rushing to go to work or rushing to get home from work. Mm -hmm. So go to the smaller airports, you know, you can Google it, small airports near me or private um, fields near me. Um, if you're interested in that, just go there, hang out, talk to people or you can do plane spotting. Where can I go to, you know, plane spot? But there's so many different ways now where you can, you know, get plugged in and reach out to people. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Okie okay, dokie then. I think we have more than a mouthful. So thank you. <laughs> All right, so thanks for sharing with us. Thanks for stopping by. This is where I'm gonna close out today's video. If you're looking for a mentor, are you opening up yourself for mentorship? $50 an hour. <laughs> I'm not cheap. <laughs> her, I'll leave her Instagram in the description bar. Be serious though, because but I'll come on pia, yeah. pia, if you're not serious. You have to be serious. She's she's very yeah. serious. I mean she's jovial and all here, but when she come when it come on to the flight table, it's a monster. She transform, you know? So <laughs> <laughs> No, but for real, that that's that's exactly Yeah. So if you're serious exactly about it, it, she's very passionate about it. As you should be if that's what you're interested in. So if you are that person, then reach out to her. I'm giving you the resource. I'm giving you my bestie, so you yes. get to you get to borrow her. <laughs> I'll help you. I'll give you. I'll give you some um some advice or some some. I'll help guide you in the right direction. Yeah. You know, or show you things to look at. But yeah, be be serious. Don't waste the time, man. You know yeah. Saying? Yeah. No, no time for no play, play thing. You know. Yeah. But <laughs> play, play, I go. <laughs> Anyways, guys. We're about for cut now, because we have some stuff to do. Plus, baby's tired of sitting here and talking, so... <laughs> Wait, how did you feel when you found out I was having a baby? Girl, I was so damn happy! I was like, ah! We saw the food in your mouth. <laughs> Guys! Guys, you have no idea. It wasn't one emotion. It was, I was happy for you. I was surprised, but I was also like, it's about time. And for all of the people that were sitting on top, but I didn't know from a year ago. Stop. Right? You never know from no year ago. Yeah. She come up a foreign. Everybody knows when you come up foreign. Yeah, I get the fried food, the fast food. And let me tell you something. Sean put it down in the kitchen. Okay. So, of course, I got to eat good. I didn't even know that she was with a child. Yeah. So, for all of the people that went out, well, me know from long time, man. Me dream it. Me this it, me that mm -hmm. it, me that it. Me lying. <laughs> Stop. Okay? Stop. Yeah. So, yeah. we FaceTime quite a bit. Mm -hmm. So, and I never, but then again, me are one of them people that were, you could have died here from black to red, and I'm like, something look different. 
<laughs> but I did not know. I did not know. But I was, I was happy. Mm -hmm. I'm so happy for you. Thank you. You guys have just been, you know what I'm saying? Thank you. May I try to get advice from the middle people? To live my life, you know? <laughs> Watch your man. Like, <laughs> and she's still tiny. I was like, I saw a rush and I was like, oh, my, my name is one ogre too tight because I feel like I'm more ogre in the belly, I got boss. You know? <laughs> she's so tiny. Guys, let me tell you, Russia tiny, you know? The camera makes her look big. The camera makes her look big. She is. You know, look at you all day. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> Shut up. I'm the big one. She's not big, so. Shut up. She's going to be an amazing mommy. Probably a better one than me because me will spoil. I'll be like, oh, why are you crying? Oh, my gosh. What do I do? 911, my baby is crying. I don't know what to do. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> it's so dramatic. <laughs> <laughs> Dramatical. Anyways, guys. I'll catch you later. And if this is the last video that you're seeing for the year, I don't know yet. But if it is, if it is, have a wonderful rest of year yes. and an amazing next year. But we're gonna talk about yes, next yes, year yes, 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 in yes. the upcoming videos. Yes. So have a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful rest of the year. You know, do something nice. Do something nice for yourself, even if that means doing nothing. That's nice too sometimes. Relax. What may I tell you? Chill out. Yeah, so they would just chill out on a couch. Oh my gosh, did we? All day and watch a movie and she fall asleep with me. But I know, was awake. Point is. I was resting the eyes. Yeah. <laughs> point is, do something nice and be nice. Do something nice for someone else. Alright? Catch y'all in the next one.